His name may actually be Anthony, but we all know him by his real name. Twig Boy! Hey folks, welcome to Squirrel Tactics. Like, subscribe, check out the Patreon, let's do this. Anthony Page, better known as Twig Boy due to his small stature, voiced by David Herman, and it should be pointed out that Twig Boy does bear a resemblance to Herman's Michael Bolton character from Office Space. He has several appearances, his first being in the pilot episode where he's a social worker for Arlen County, later renamed to Heimlich County. He's introduced into the show after Bobby didn't follow one of baseball's cardinal rules of always keeping your eye on the ball, though to be fair, the ball found his eye anyway. Look at the batter, boy! Watch the ball! Huh? What? Do hey, don't look at me! Keep your eye on the ball! Keep my eye on the what? Stop looking at me, boy! Watch the ball! Can't hear you, Dad. Combine that with people seeing Hank getting mad at Megalomart because he couldn't find what he wanted... Hey, that's that Hank Hill fella that lives on the block next to us. He sure has a temper, doesn't he? Sure does. Makes you wonder who gave his boy that black eye. Uh, you're gonna have to pay for that, dude. You're fired! And a game of town gossip telephone followed. Not sure if y'all played that game as kids, but yeah, word got around, and as usual, it wasn't the truth. Alice says she saw Hank hit his son. Really? Well, I heard he threatened a clerk of Megalomart with a hammer. Did you hear about Hank Hill? He beat up his son, and then some ladies in Megalomart tried to stop him, and he beat them up too. Well, somebody really ought to report him for the boy's sake. This twisted version of events ends up making it to Twig Boy, who did jump into action, which is sadly often not the case when it comes to child protective services. You say he hit his son with a bat? No, no that, that is definitely not acceptable. I wish I could, ma'am, but the regulations say we can't take custody of the boy without an interview. Don't you worry. He's in the system now. I am on my way. Uh. He meets with the Hills, which does not get off to a very good start. Mrs. Hill, would you say your husband has a bad temper? Who, Hank? No, Hank is as gentle as a lamb. Uh, 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 no more bouncing that ball! Hank? We have a visitor. Now, I know Twig Boy gets a lot of hate, but considering he's there because abuse has been reported to CPS, he has to be careful and ask certain questions because that's his job, and he has to look out for the welfare of the child. So, your assertion, Mr. Hill, is that Bobby got the black eye at his baseball game? That's not my assertion. That's what happened. Have you ever hit your son, Mr. Hill? No. What the heck are you writing? All you gotta write is one word, no! And Hank is being pretty angry and confrontational. I don't know if the kids still use the word aggro, but yeah, aggro. Which makes him seem more likely to possibly be abusing his son. The optics here are not good, and Twig Boy makes a fair observation. Mr. Hill, I feel that you're coming from an anger mindset. And if you're projecting this anger onto me, it gives me grave concerns as to how you facilitate your son's growth in private. Mister, I have not begun to project my anger onto you. Again, social worker shows up, the father comes in angry, yelling, and throwing things, which broke something else and is damn near seething in anger, because he's being asked questions that should be asked in this situation, and then this did not help. Mrs. Hill, how did you get this here on your forehead? Oh, this? Well, Bobby threw his baseball at You the... threw a baseball at your mother? Oh, Hank, it was an accident. So would this be the same baseball that gave Bobby the black eye? Yeah, that's not good. I mean, we're dealing with a guy that hears about people running into doors to get black eyes, which of course isn't true. And here's this guy saying that the son he has been reported to abuse got a black eye from a baseball, the same baseball that just so happened to hurt his wife. Peggy ends up telling Twig Boy about Hank's narrow urethra, which makes Hank even angrier and yeah, Hank has the right to be irritated, but he does start getting louder and doesn't like it when he's called out for it. Please, Mr. Hill, loud is not allowed. Oh, when I think of all my hard-earned tax dollars going to pay a bunch of little twig boy bureaucrats like you, it just makes me want to... Oh, oh, God, it just... Hi. Honey, 
Bring me my BC headache powder and a glass of water. Hank continues on as Peggy gets him his BC powder, going on a bit of a diatribe that, honestly, really doesn't help his case here. Also, I recommend if you have to deal with a social worker, it's probably best if you don't threaten them with bodily harm before kicking them out of your house. Now you listen here. You see that boy? That's my boy. And if you ever try to take him away, so help me God, I'll tear you a new one bigger than the Grand Canyon. Now I want you to get out of my house. You're not welcome here. I mean now, before I give you a black eye. Twig Boy then interviews the neighbors, as he should, being told by Dale that Hank wouldn't hurt Bobby. You ever seen Hank hit Bobby? Nuh-uh, never. See? Now you can just move along now. And then he talks with Boomhauer as much as one can talk with Boomhauer, but we see him doing his due diligence. I've been calling y'all people better than a month now. I grab about y'all every time a dang old dog crossed the street, started yapping at y'all 24 hours a day, and that nobody answered. You called, how are you supposed to come out to do anything about that dog if you're just going to get a dang old computer? I ain't going to come over here and just shut that dang old dog. Now, some of you may not be happy that I've been rather lenient on Twig Boy here because, under the circumstances, he hasn't done anything wrong. Looking at the situation from a neutral standpoint, he's handled everything exactly the way he should. You get a report of abuse. You do a welfare check of the home and interview the parents as well as neighbors to see what the story is. That's how the system works. And the accused abuser barging in while yelling, throwing, and breaking things and is visually angry the entire time and winds up kicking the social worker out. Look, I know Hank is in no way abusive, but he played that situation the absolute worst way he possibly could. Yes, I have defended Twig Boy and that's going to stop right now. He overhears the boys doing impressions of Hank with which are clearly not Hank, but he somehow believes it. I'll tear you a new one. When I get my hands on you, you little pea brain, I'll bust your butt into little pieces. Oh, I knew it. The reason he believed this was Twig Boy's preconceived bias, which we'll get more into here in a minute. After hearing the obviously fake Hank Hill voice, Twig Boy tries to get Bobby to leave the Hill house, going so far as to try to sell Bobby on the idea using a rich family in a pool. I can put you with a nice foster family in North Arlen where you can develop healthy life adaptations. And they've got a pool. Honey, let's give him Luann. Hey, I got a girl in here you can take right now. And Hank's kind of right here. We don't know Luann's exact age, but considering she was staying with them due to a terrible home life, if she was a minor at that point, then yeah, CPS should have been investigating her parents. Twig Boy ignores this and keeps pushing, which drives Hank and Ladybird to get him to leave. Bobby, I know you can't talk in front of him. I said get! Get! Get out of okay. here! You are out of control! You're out of control, Twiggy! He returns to the office where we see this. It'll make sense why I'm showing it later. Thanks for the latte, Kenneth. His boss wants to speak with him and they discuss the Hill case. And we finally see Twig Boy's preconceived bias. Where he refers to the neighborhood as Redneck City. Now, Rainy Street is not Redneck City. That's Belcher's Grove. You couldn't confirm any actual abuse, but you still recommended the state take custody? Oh, oh yeah. I mean, the whole neighborhood was Redneck City. Did, did you see in the report how he dented my geo? Hmm. <laughs> Redneck City. That's pretty funny. Where are you from, son? Los Angeles. Also notice he's from Los Angeles, and this is strictly a theory, but it's quite possible that Twig Boy came to Texas from LA to save rednecks from themselves. It's the whole savior complex. He views these people to be beneath him because they're just dumb Texas rednecks, not like him, a sophisticated, educated man from that shining beacon on the hill that is Los Angeles. He's bringing civilization to the uncivilized Texans. Twig Boy's boss continues to ask questions, and we find out that he did not do his due diligence by checking with the baseball coach. How did you like old Harvey? Who's Harvey? Oh, he's a little league coach. You did talk to the little league coach, didn't you? <laughs> Why didn't he talk to the coach who would have corroborated Hank's story? Because he had already made up his mind. And honestly, he probably would have thought that the coach was lying to cover for Hank. However, because he didn't do his job and he tried to take a child out of a home without fully doing his job, he is either fired or forced to resign and is going back to Los Angeles. We're calling off our investigation of your father. The workers that visited you will be leaving the office and going back to L.A. 
The last we see of him in this episode is Twig Boy on the bus heading back to LA when he sees Hank and Bobby play boxing, which he takes as proof that he was right all along. <laughs> he punched him! I knew it! I told him! Did, did you see that? See what, Twig Boy? <sighs> Never mind. Then he appeared in junkie business after Strickland's new accessories associate Leon was fired for drug use in the workplace. Ah. <laughs> what in the Sam Hill? Oh no! This is your new accessories associate? Jeez, Hank, he's a drooling nincompoop. Don't worry, sir. He's as good as gone. This leads to Twig Boy coming in. At this point, he works as a counselor at One Last Chance House, a sober living facility where Leon went for help with his addiction. Hello, Mr. Hill. Anthony Page, group leader, One Last Chance House. Are you aware that you hired a drug addict? I am now. That's why I fired him. Oh, yeah. You're in trouble, all right. It's against the law to fire this man. He's a drug addict. Are you sure you don't want to shoot me? Some of you may be wondering why Hank doesn't recognize Anthony in this episode, and he actually did in a deleted scene. That's what I showed you earlier when Hank just calls out Twig Boy. Oh, yeah. You're in trouble, all right. It's against the law to fire this man. He's a drug addict. Twig Boy! So Twig Boy comes in to get Leon his job back. Thanks for the latte, Leon. See, I told you it would make sense why I showed that earlier. He explains why they can't fire Leon and that they legally have to hire him back, and he's actually right here. You have to rehire this man, Mr. Hill. Legally, drug addiction is a disability, and now that Leon's in rehab, the law prohibits you from firing him. Rehab? Since when? Since 4.30 yesterday afternoon. And I wasn't officially fired till 5. He posts the copy of the ADA or Americans with Disabilities Act. And yeah, drug addiction is covered under the ADA since 1994. But it only applies to those who are no longer using. So the whole Leon got into rehab before he was technically fired thing is correct. Had Hank fired him effective immediately, it would have been another story. This is the Americans with Disabilities Act. It ensures that no person, no matter how disadvantaged, how short or obese or blind or gay or even stoned, can be discriminated against once his healing has begun. Also, I love Buck's reaction here, which is honestly totally understandable. Yeah, well, right now, I'd kill for a big, fat, blind gay guy if we could just get some damn work done around here. Hank is not happy, and he tells Leon that he'll have to do exactly what he's told and show up at 8 a.m. sharp. But Twig Boy lays out how things are going to go, because he's following the law. Mm -mm. Eight's not going to work for Leon. He's got withdrawal therapy until 11. But then I take my methadone, so I should be feeling pretty good by the time I get here. What? I'm not going to let you come to work late, all hopped up on goof and fall. He also informs Hank that because Leon's pupils will be dilated, they'll need to dim the lights whenever he comes in, which Hank also doesn't like, but again, it's the law. What kind of game are you trying to play here? It's not a game, sir. It's the law, and we win. Woo! Problem is, soon the other employees start abusing the ADA so that they don't have to work, leaving Hank to have to do everything on his own. Sorry, Hank. I suffer from obsessive compulsive disorder. If I get out of this chair, Garth Brooks is gonna die. So he hatches a plan, which leads to him calling Twig Boy back in. Hello, Mr. Hell. I came as quick as I could. From your message, it sounded as if you'd become the victim of some kind of discrimination. Hank tells him that he's disabled due to a condition known as good worker syndrome, where he gets physically sick if everyone around him isn't working their hardest. And yeah, that doesn't work because of course it doesn't work. GWS isn't real, and honestly, it wasn't a very good plan on Hank's part. Ew. People like you who abuse the system ruin it for the rest of us. The truly disabled. Fun fact, this episode came out in 1998, 10 years before the ADA Amendments Act of 2008, under which carpal tunnel became a disability. So at the time the episode came out, carpal tunnel syndrome was not considered a disability under the Americans with Disabilities Act. No matter what Twig Boy was claiming, and yeah, I read the ADA, that's the level of effort I put into this stuff. Anywho, Twig Boy goes to leave because there's no point in him being there, and Leon makes an interesting decision. Call me if you give you any more trouble, Leon. Don't call me Leon anymore. That's the name I use drugs with. From now on, I want to be called, um, Hank Hill. Hank obviously is not too happy about this, but it doesn't really matter what Hank thinks. Well, what, you know, the original Hank thinks. No! 
No, that's too far. I cannot accommodate that. I won't. It's not up to you, Hank. It's up to Hank. This man is not your slave. You don't get to name him. This pushes the original Hank to quit, thereby lowering the number of employees at Strickland to 14, and this causes them to be exempt from Title I of the ADA. You only have to follow it if you have 15 or more employees. So Buck fires Leon and tells everybody to get back to work, except for Debbie, of course. And we don't see Twig Boy anymore in this episode. After this, we strangely see him at Lucky and Luann's wedding, and he also has a another appearance that many don't know about because it's probably not canon. And that's in this Super Bowl ad from 2000. Can I cut in? I, I'm a big football fan. Want to get back to the game? And what makes you think I don't? Well, look what you're buying, man. Wheat, grass, humus. What the hell is that? It's a lemony garbanzo dip. You have never seen a football in your life. Yeah, King of the Hill actually had several commercials that a lot of people aren't aware of, which is kind of sad because I mean 50 foot Bobby and Invisible Dale. I may end up covering these, and if that's something that interests you, well, just let me know down in the comments. So, Twig Boy, and if you're wondering why I've referred to him pretty much exclusively as Twig Boy and not as Anthony, well, it's kind of like White Devil from Ace Ventura. I couldn't help but notice that Equinso Archer part. Did you just refer to me as White Devil? This how they know you. Yeah, it's how you know him. I have to say he actually seems to want to help people, though he does not go about it in the best way. Mostly due to a possible superiority complex, or as I said earlier, maybe he just thinks he's better than these backwards Texas rednecks and he's come from the land of civilized men to show them the way. I could be wrong, who knows. And I'm not trying to get political here. Please don't start political talk in the comments. We're all here to enjoy King of the Hill, folks. But he very much comes off as the stereotypical self-righteous elitist liberal. Which, to be fair, like Appleseed, it's the stereotype that a lot of people buy into about people from California, especially LA. He's used as pretty much the perfect foil for Hank in the show's first episode, and I really wished he'd had more appearances. Maybe he could have been a sort of rival for Hank and his more conservative views over the course of the series. All in all, Twig Boy served his purpose in the show, and he served it well. But it would still be interesting to find out why he came back to Texas. You know, uh, maybe it was the lattes. I have no choice. Shabu, for my last wish, I want everything back to normal. It is done. Wait a minute. This isn't back to normal. This is light beer. Darn you, Shabu! Shabu!